Hello fellow chemists and welcome back. Um, today I want to help you classify the type of a chemical reaction. Um, the goal is for me to explain the different types and then to go through nine examples. Um, the other thing that my students have is they have a foldable that looks like this that has all the reaction types on the front and uh, very detailed examples um, on the inside. So hopefully you have something like this that your teacher's given you, or maybe they might have a list that just looks like this, maybe some notes they gave you in class um, about how each type of reaction can be um, given as an example, but they won't use elements or compounds. A lot of times uh, your teacher or a textbook will just say, you know, A and B as um, some kind of element or compound. So here are the five types. You've got synthesis, or some books will call it composition. What happens there is an element A um, and an element B, or these could be compounds, they turn into one thing called AB. Um, you could have a decomp reaction where AB, that compound, turns into two things, um, and they'll just say A and B. The key with those two is, again, you're making one product for a synthesis, or you're starting with A reactant and you're making many different products, okay? So next one, single replacement or displacement. This comes in two kinds, whether you have a cation or anion. So periodic table is going to be really important again, knowing where are the metals that they're going to make cations and where are those nonmetals that they're going to make anions. And again, that goes back to a video I had about how atoms want to gain or lose electrons to become ions. So you can watch that. So back to cations, then A will be a cation. It'll push out B and kind of bond with this element C. Uh, or a polyatomic ion, or A and B can not be kind of pushing each other out. A might try to push out C, that's what an anion would do, and then bond with B and push out C. Um, you might have combustions. Everybody loves, you know, you're going to blow something up today. So you could combust an element um, and burn it in air and make an oxide, what's called an element oxide. Or hydrocarbons are common burned in air like propane and butane and methane combust them with oxygen from the air to make CO2 and water. Last fun type of chemical change are double replacements or displacements. They can be precipitate, gas, or neutralization. Um, you have two compounds. They're usually made up of anion and cation. Again, don't forget where your anions and cations can come from. Or they could be polyatomic ions. So in another video, I went through how to name those. Um, you're going to bond and switch places. So A is going to bond with D, and then C is going to bond with B. If it makes a solid, that's called a precipitate. If it makes a gas, they'll call it gas. That one's easy. And typically, if this uh, molecule right here is water, uh, they'll call it a neutralization because these would be an acid and a base. So I wrote out some even more um, descript examples. So here's what single replacement would be like, an element and a compound reacting um, to switch places. Combustion, again, we've got really the key is that we're burning in air. Uh, decomp. Um, we got basically one compound producing many different things as a product. Let's see if I can fit them all on here. Then I've got synthesis. Synthesis, again, is the opposite, really, of decomp, where you have two things and they turn into one. And last but not least, let me sneak combustion off of here and put single and double next to each other because they're very similar. Two compounds, basically the anions and cations are going to switch places. So let's see if we can classify these nine examples I have. Um, reaction one, we got sodium reacting with chlorine to produce sodium chloride. So what you want to do again is kind of look through your choices. So does that look like I have an element and a compound? Nope, I have two pure elements, so it's not single. Um, do I start with one compound and produce many? Nope, it actually looks like the opposite of that. I start with two elements and I make one compound. So there's the winner right there that I have two or more substances that are combining to form one substance. Um, and that is the definition of synthesis or composition. So then what you would do is you'd say this one is synthesis. That's reaction one. Let's move on to two. See how many we can get through. I have nine. So reaction two. You've got methane gas burning in air to produce carbon dioxide and water. So again, if you kind of look, that's definitely not synthesis because I'm making two things and then I have two things. Um, some people might think it looks like a double replacement, but it's not because we have pure elemental oxygen. And this is everybody's favorite, typically, which is combustion, and that's the winner. An element or a hydrocarbon react to burn in air. 
Hydrocarbon just means it has hydrogens and carbons, and it does produce carbon dioxide and water. So there's our winner. We would say that this is a combustion. You could say it's even a combustion of a hydrocarbon. That's number two. Moving on. Let's see what number three looks like. So here's reaction three. That is not combustion. There's no burning in air. It's zinc replacing copper nitrate in solution to produce zinc nitrate and copper solid. So let's look through. Again, kind of say, is that decomp? Well, decomp starts with one compound or one substance. We have two, so it's not decomp. Let's try another one. How about single replacement? That's the winner. We have an element and a compound reacting, and they're producing another element and compound. A is sort of taking the place of zinc. Copper nitrate, that's why I talked about those polyatomic ions. That's B, so copper's B, and C is nitrate. And then you can see how A is pushing it out, pushing B out, and then bonding with the nitrate. Important to know your ionic charges, too, when you make those compounds. So this would be called a single replacement. And since these are uh, metals replacing each other, zinc and copper are metals, you might even call it that a cation replacement because both of those are in the metal area. So you may even have to call it single replacement of metal cations. All right, moving on, we're doing good here. Reaction number four, you've got lead nitrate and sodium iodide reacting to produce lead iodide solid precipitate and sodium nitrate solution. That's what the AQ means. So let's look, that's not single. Um, decomp again, can't be that one because you just start with one substance and we have two. Oops, sorry, I'm gonna grab another one here. How about this one, does this look like the right match? And it is, A and B are two different, um, in this case lead is A and B is nitrate, so two different cation anion. Sodium iodide are C and D and you can see how A, which we'd say is B, or PB, sorry, lead, is bonding with iodine, making a precipitate, and then sodium bonds with the nitrate. Look again, when we start writing these and balancing these, you gotta be careful that nitrate, you don't take two of them, uh, cause sodium is a one plus charge and nitrate is just a one minus. So that's confusing sometimes for students, but that'll be a different video. This one we just wanna say that this is a double replacement. And again, there, came, there were a few double replacements. Let me pull back up the choices here. We can make solid gas or liquid, and solid means a precipitate, so you may even have to say this is a double replacement and it's a precipitate. Some people even put PPT for precipitate. Um, I've even seen people actually even draw a little arrow down like that. All right, so we're gonna do reaction five now. So take a look, I'm gonna try to go a little faster. Um, you try to predict what type you think that reaction five is. And I'm just gonna grab the right answer. And it is a decomp reaction. We have um, one molecule here, or two moles of it, but one molecule called water. And we're making hydrogen and oxygen from it. So we have one reactant, and we're making many products, which is the definition of decomposition. Um, what's unique about this decomposition, though, is that we are using electricity um, to run through the water and uh, make that actually cause those molecules to decompose. All right, on to reaction six. Take a look, and the right answer is single replacement. You've got an element, uh, chlorine. I know it's diatomic, but it's still an element, and you're gonna replace bromine and turns into bromine liquid, which again is diatomic, and they're kind of fighting over that potassium ion. So that's single replacement. This one's a little different than the other single replacement that we had because this is a single replacement with anions. How do I know that? Those elements are over here in the nonmetal area. So you may have to say again that this is an anion replacement, two nonmetals. All right, reaction seven, almost near the end. Give that one a shot, what do you think? This is almost a trick question, I'll give you a hint. There's two answers. This can be a combustion because we're burning magnesium in air and making a metal oxide, or it can be synthesis, so this can be both. So you have oxygen, that's what allows it to be a combustion, but it also takes two elements and makes one compound. So that's why it's gonna be a synthesis. So you can say synthesis um, or combustion. Mainly because of that you know, oxygen from the air. Two left, let's see if you get them right. How about reaction eight, take a look. And really quickly, winner is 
double replacement. And it's a double replacement because we have sodium bonding with chloride on the other side and hydrogen bonding with sulfide. So we got double replacement or displacement. Maybe that's what your book or your teacher says. And again, we got three types. Let's see if we can pick which one. Solid, gas, or liquid. Well, precipitate is solid. We didn't have that. We had a gas being produced, so some people will say it's a double replacement where it produces a gas right there. Not a very nice smelling gas either. All right, moving on. Last but not least, hopefully get this one right. Reaction nine is another double. I'm trying to trick you, huh? Double replacement. Um, and then it's the last type. It's a double replacement where we get liquid water. Um, so a lot of people call it neutralization. Um, again, you're looking here because they got an acid and a base and they make water. It's okay to write water as HOH too. I'll promote that in a couple more videos that I have. So let me show you again the types. Hope you got those all right. Again, here are the types. Um, and I actually think I got one of each. I had nine examples. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there we go. Um, again, my students have a, a foldable that looks like this, a little more detailed, because in the inside it actually goes over very specific types of decomp and synthesis. Um, again, don't forget, you might want to look at a periodic table and have a polyatomic ion sheet also. And then last but not least, when we move on, I'm going to fold this up and show you something. All of these reactions, once you get farther in chemistry, will all be classified as redox reactions where you gain or lose electrons, these atoms, um, Share, don't share, they actually um, give electrons or take electrons. And for my students, that's a whole section we can put underneath here. Um, but you may not have to do that, so maybe ignore that and put it back. And again, the goal here today was all very simple, how to classify the type of chemical reaction. I hope the video helped.